So I've, I've basically been painting since I can remember, or before I can remember, actually. And one of the things I love to do is, is depict things that we don't normally see or think we see, um, as in movement and the energy of the body and glaciation and wind and all sorts of things. But first, a little history. When I was a kid, I drew all the time, as you can see here. And we had a friend down the street, and we do we do our fake um, art fairs because we live in Ann Arbor, the big art fair. So we do our own art fair in the backyard and fill up tables with art and sell them paintings for ten dollars, ten cents a piece. <laughs> <laughs> my very first uh, teacher was my grandmother, and she was uh, pulled into a WPA art class in the early '30s during the Depression in order to get quorum for the teacher, and she. Um, was a really pretty good uh, painter and painted the rest of her life. And one morning we were sitting around the kitchen table painting with watercolors. I was probably, I don't know, seven or eight. And um, she was a really good uh, snow painter, actually. And uh, so uh, she was a really good, so she was a really good um, painter of snow in watercolor. And she said to me while she was teaching me, this is my grandmother, she was said to me, snow isn't white. And I think that was a great Zen moment for me and got me interested in exploring the visual world. So I drew a lot and I was, I've always been fascinated by the face and how simple a couple lines could really express uh, the, our, our physiognomy and what's going on. And, and uh, so it, it, I filled books and books and books full of that. And then this is a, in grad school on my MA show, these are large, uh, monoprints made on rice paper. And so the, I was very much in a time in my life where I was trying to find my body and trying to be be here now, as they say, uh, really try to embody. So there were real explorations of, of that physicality. Then my MA show, this is a large uh, pen and ink drawing. And I was Ooh. very inspired by, i just taken a class in um, international storytelling. And so this was very much a, a sort of long, complicated narrative in this drawing. And for the uh, MA, for the opening, I had a storyteller come in and weave a whole story about this drawing. It's about eight feet tall and 20 something feet long, which I created on the floor of the dance studio in University of Wisconsin. And when he was telling the story, he was narrating this part about the monster. And um, he said, and the monster said, and just at that moment, a cat had walked into the back of the uh, gallery. And <laughs> So it was very perfect. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I was, I was really into the pen and ink and, and mixing up the story and, and mystery. So I moved to New York with like almost all my graduating class at the University of Wisconsin um, and fell into one of my other loves, which was books. Um, and I worked at the very famous Gotham Book Mart. I'd actually met an I.S. Nid years before. And so the, the mythology of the Gotham Book Mart was deep in my heart. And I got into illustrating uh, poetry books and small press publications. And this is a party with um, Arthur Miller. Ooh. And I painted a lot of uh, 22 by 30 watercolors. And these are a lot of Chinese pigments that are very, very dense and probably slightly toxic. Um, and a lot of them are very sleepy and inward. Maybe because I was painting at 2 o'clock in the morning and listening to WBAI before I went to work the <laughs> next day. <laughs> You all remember BAI. And my first show was at Soho's at, I don't know how many remember that wonderful uh, comic book and et cetera store on West Broadway. And so the, I had a bunch of pieces in the back of the store and then gave me the front window. And so I made it into sort of a fish tank um, and it said watercolors by Janet Morgan and there's fish swimming around it. And it, it was really fun. And we had these ads and we stuck them in every copy of the New York Times that they sold. <laughs> oh, look at, this. At, at the time I had this wonderful uh, boyfriend who was a fashion photographer and, and he told me he said do a drawing of your body from the boobs down so I did this and then he took this really fabulous photograph I still think it's kind of uncanny and um, he is now a, he was a fashion photographer then and he, he thought it was kind of boring and now he's a very well-known uh, photographer of the stars in Hollywood. And his work is really, really, really quite astonishing. Um, his name is Matt Stadler. 
And after I worked in the bookstore for eight years, which was a wonderful job, it paid, it was really hard to live on the money. Um, I decided I needed to do something else. So I started fishing around and I ended up um, studying art therapy and expressive arts therapy. And in the process, I uh, got an internship at Sloan Kettering in the adult recreation department and not really knowing really too much what I was doing, but um, really enjoying it. And I used a lot of um, meditation and visualization techniques um, with my patients and in order to, first of all, get them sort of loosened up to make art. Uh, because when people have meditated a little while, then they could just sort of dive into it and their critical voice would not be so loud. And we also, this painting on the top is one of my patients' uh, visualizations of her surgery. And not very many people did really graphic uh, things about their, their cancer. Um, but occasionally they did, and, and we did a lot of visualizations for healing, and, and uh, yeah. And then um, one day I got asked to do a painting of a goddess for a cover of an Anne Waldman book. And this is another one of the instances where the original thing never happens, but it sort of blossoms into something entirely different. So I, start, I started thinking after this, well, where do all these deities come from? You know, India has 400,000 of them, and we have quite a few ourselves. So I figured, let's make some more. And it was during the AIDS crisis, so we definitely needed the God of Safe Sex, who's up here on the top left. And I printed him in little business card size um, so that people could carry them, him around in their wallet to remind him to be good. And, uh, and on the right is the God's Play With Our Planet. And this is, a, on the left is the God of Patience and Patience, because I was looking at ID polls every single day and the goddess of self-satisfaction. And on the right is sort of the quintessential piece of the whole thing, which is the cosmic coupling before the Big Bang. So you can imagine what that sex was like, right? <laughs> and, and then I took a wonderful class on how to create your own religion, which I sort of already had, but we did rituals and you remember this, Katie? It was really wonderful. And so I, I came up with yeah, with Connectiva, who is the switchboard operator, so you can say to her, I need the something about, uh, let me see, uh, robbery. Okay, let's do the, yeah, so I would find them whatever deity was appropriate. And I taught the class on how to create your own deity quite often, and I would always start with a, a pump, primer, priming the pump, uh, with showing lots of images and talking about all the iconography of deities and stuff. But my absolute favorite time teaching it was at the Rubin because we got to use their collection and their staff was really, really fabulous. And everybody sort of understood from the get-go what we were doing. Mm -hmm. And I did a show um, at the Chapel of Sacred Mirrors when Cosm was in the, the village, or in Chelsea rather. Um, and here we had little tables underneath each goddess and people could write their prayers and requests and, and so we made those into little poems afterwards. And another uh, kind of thing that started from a request that never went anywhere but then exploded was um, a friend asked me to do two banners for the Woodstock Goddess Festival and it was like 100 degrees and I did two of them in like a two days. And, and uh, they never got used for that. But it got me started on working really big, which is, which is a lot, a lot of fun. And so the, I, the original fabric was whatever I had around, but then it turned into um, theatrical backdrop muslin, uh, which was nice cheap. And then I would sew uh, rod pockets on the top and bottom. And one day I got a very funny email from a woman I only knew from Reputation, um, which was a good reputation. And she asked me if I would come and dance Kali for her tantric yoga uh, gathering. And I'm a belly dancer, so I figured, well, how often do you get asked that question? So, so I did, and I realized it was also time to paint Kali. Um, and a good friend of mine I was asking people, can I paint Kali? This is like really intense. And a friend of mine said, as long as you're willing to let go of the things that you're done with, because that's what Kali does, uh, is really cleaning out. So um, I took this to the to the event and also painted myself entirely blue and lots of more lots of bones and skulls and it was quite a wonderful event. Um, this piece I started laying on the, the piece laid on the floor and I stood in the middle and, and twisted really fast so that the whole fabric twisted and then sprayed it from the side and so when I opened it back up it had this beautiful radial symmetry which sort of told me what it wanted to do. 
ahead. And, and this piece is very much about, I know a lot of you have danced a lot. And when you have those moments when you're dancing and you, it's kind of like this cosmic deja vu and you feel connected to all the ancestors who have ever danced to is almost everyone. And it's just this really, really wonderful, wonderful moment. And so these um, banners ended up all over the place. Uh, my husband, Greg Fricks and I got invited to show in Central Asia and our friend said, oh, it'll cost you $100. And we said, well, how often do you get a chance to show in Bishkek? So we <laughs> packed up, folded up art, and rolled it up, and packed it in our suitcases and stuff. And we get there, and he says, I'm taking you to the gallery. And it and he turns out to be the National Museum of Art, which was quite something. So they hung my Kuan Yin on the outside of the museum, because everybody knew who Kuan Yin was, pretty close to China. And the opening was full of you know being interviewed in Russian and for TV and stuff. It was it was quite an interesting experience. We we're the first Americans to ever show there. Uh, they also ended up at the Women of Power conference in in New York City, and lastly they ended up at um, the Parliament of World Religions in Toronto, which was really fun because three of them were Hindu and there were lots and lots of Hindu people at this conference. There were eight thousand people, and so I, whenever I was meet someone who was Hindu, I'd say, Do you mind that I'm painting your deities. And they would all say, no, 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 we love it. Do it, go for it, you got it. <laughs> Which was a really wonderful, wonderful thing. And last couple of years, I've been working on uh, the Body Temple series, which is all about the energy of the body. And these are uh, 40 inches by 26, which is the size I've been working at a lot lately. And it's, it's very nice and sort of relatable on a very physical level. And these are watercolor and mixed media. I use a lot of things for resist. Um, this one's about, called Inner Fire. It's about all the energy generated from yoga and meditation and love and all those other things we, we crave. And this is horned and ready, which I think we have to be horned and ready right now for what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> the hanged woman to sort of riff on the, uh, the hanging man on the tarot. And she's done with resist. This is all done with resist. What What do you use? Wax or? Um, there's a painted resist that you work on. It's kind of like rubber cement, but better. And and so you paint it on and let it dry, and then you put the paint on top of it, let that dry, and then pick it back up with an eraser. Um, and I also use a lot of. Um, this is probably just crepas and also all different kinds of wax crayons and oil crayons and something. All and they all act a little bit differently. Wow. Um, this one's called the dynamic center. We've all been needing to center ourselves a lot lately, so that's a good one. Uh, this one's called the grounding card. And this one, a lot of them have a lot of iridescence and uh, interference paints, which um, look differently from different angles and light up in different amounts of light and that sort of thing. Oh, wow. That's beautiful. So luckily during this whole isolation time, I've had my studio at home with my husband and my two cats. So. It's, it hasn't been too bad. And we've, for the first couple months, we were basically just doing things on foot. So we really got to explore uh, Prospect Park. This is in early spring when there's still like little yellow halos on the trees. It's really, really beautiful. Um, and we also have a secret garden nearby. So that's really fun to, we take our little ground chairs and sit on the ground and, and paint the flowers that are 10 inches in front of our faces. And, uh, uh, it's, so that's been really quite wonderful. And this is this one's called In Good Hands, which I hope you are all are in good hands right now during this difficult, difficult time. 